Good morning, everyone. My name is Jenny Matheson, and I want to welcome you to Bethel. I am here today to share with you all about mission, what opportunities lie before us to be on mission with Jesus and on mission for our neighbors, for our friends, and for our kids. For example, did you know that starting next week, it's Mission Week at Bethel? From Sunday, February 6th through Sunday the 13th, we will have many opportunities to hear firsthand from our missionaries, Carrie and Nathaniel. They will be spending the week with us in Fergus Falls and in Battle Lake, sharing about the work that God is doing in and through them among the Bagheerme people. They will be joining us in worship, in Sunday school times, and at events during the week as well. Check out your bulletin or our website or social media pages for more information, photos, and updates along the way. You also may have seen or heard about the Homes of Hope mission trip that is coming up at the end of March. We have an amazing partnership with churches in the area of Ensenada, Mexico, and have teamed up with our friends there many times to build homes and to be the church together. We are so excited to share that another trip to Ensenada is being planned for this spring, and you are invited to come and share your heart, your skills, and the gospel. This trip leaves on March 28th. It's coming soon. Finally, I want to share with you about mission to our kids. Today is Camp Sunday. Inspiration Point Bible Camp is at both Bethel Fergus Falls and Battle Lake today, ready to share with us about the mission and ministry of camp, about what a unique and special tool camp is to share Jesus Christ with kids and families. No matter the sin, he will always love you. God taught me this week how to lean on him in all the times of trouble and that even though I might be stuck in a situation, he can always pull me out of it and he is my rock and solid foundation. Camp is important to me because even though I go to church and things like that, this camp is just like something you can't find anywhere else and it really helps me build my relationship with God. Something God taught me was that um, all it takes is trust and um, I was wondering how do you go to heaven and all you have to do is believe and I thought that was so cool because he died on the cross and he did all of this stuff for us and all he says to go to heaven is that you have to believe in him. So I think that's so awesome. You'll see in your bulletin an envelope labeled Heart for Camp. This is a simple way to give to the scholarship fund that Bethel has. Each year through Heart for Camp scholarships, we are able to help around 100 kids get to Inspiration Point to hear about Jesus. So I just wanted to highlight this opportunity to use the red envelope in your bulletin, and there's more at the Connection Center, to give to this scholarship fund. Or take a minute to stop by the camp display in the foyer today to hear more about the mission of iPoint and how you can become involved. That would be awesome. So again, welcome to you and to worship today. Thank you for thinking about mission with me, the mission of proclaiming the message of Jesus Christ so that people come to faith in and live for him. Let's lift the name of Jesus high now as we continue in worship of him together. Good morning, church. Good morning, and welcome to you. Glad that you are here today. If you're joining us in Bethel Battle Lake this morning, welcome. Glad that you're with us. Uh, if you're joining us somewhere and sometime online, glad you're here as well. Um, welcome. So uh, there's an African proverb that says this. Those who ask questions cannot avoid answers. <laughs> we all have questions, don't we? And it is good that we not only avoid, that we don't avoid our questions, but, but neither to avoid the answers that come to some of our tough questions that we ask. The tough question that we're asking today is this question. How can I know if I'm going to heaven? Good question, right? How can I know if I'm going to heaven? Now, I think heaven is a topic about which there is some confusion on our part. Uh, we seem confused. I mean, everybody seems to want to go to heaven, right? I mean, ask the average person on the street, 
would you like to go to heaven? And they'll probably say, yeah, absolutely. I'd, I'd like to go to heaven. Then ask, would you like to go now? And, and watch their reaction, right? There's a little bit of, well, well um, I'm kind of busy today, but yeah, one day I want to go there. We kind of have this odd relationship with heaven. We really, on the one hand, can't wait to get there. And yet, yet we can wait kind of too, right, for many. Um, before he died, uh, Steve Jobs pointed out how everyone wants to go to heaven, but no one wants to die, Yeah, so we kind of have this strange relationship with the idea of being in heaven. Still, the question is a good one. How can I know if I'm going to heaven? If you have heard me share uh, a bit of my faith journey before, then you've heard me talk about the night that I, as as an eight or nine-year-old, asked this exact question. Um... My story is, is a bit like this. Um, I, I grew up in a Christian home. Um, I was brought to church uh, from a very early age. Uh, if the church doors were open, uh, we were there. Uh, we were there because my parents believed in community, the church community, and being a part of a church community. Uh, and, and there was the fact that my dad was the pastor, so we sort of needed to come, right? I went to church, uh, and I was brought there from very early on. I was brought before I was old enough to fight back, which I recommend for you, by the way, as parents. Bring them while they still have no say in the affairs of their life. You know, make sure that you lay the foundation early on. And so they, they did that. So we brought us to church. And so I heard about Jesus growing up my whole life. Um, I heard it from my parents, I heard it in Sunday school, I heard it in church, I heard it everywhere. And, and that was good. And so like, I believed that message from early on, right? I believed in Jesus. I believed that he died on the cross to forgive me of my sins, and I loved Jesus. I knew that Jesus loved me. Still, there was this moment where it was a bit of a crisis of faith moment. I think an opportunity that God used in my life. Because I, I, one night, again, eight, nine years old, I went to sleep, and I was in that stage between going to bed and falling asleep. And some say that's your truest self. You're left with just your thoughts and, and no pretension. There you are, just as you are. And I had this nagging thought in my mind. And this was my thought that kept me from falling asleep. The thought was, if I were to die during the night, where would I go? Man, where, where would I go if I died? I, want, I knew what I wanted the answer to be. I knew I wanted to go to be with Jesus in heaven, but I wasn't really sure that I would, would go there. And I don't know why. I don't know why I was somehow doubting this that day. Um, the reality is, if you haven't had that question come to you before, just wait. You probably have it, right? But I had it that time. Um, I don't know what brought that on. I don't know what I ate, what I was watching. Maybe it was the prayer that mom and dad taught us to pray. I look back on that. I'm like, they were really pretty good parents, but there was a prayer that they taught us to pray. Have you, have you taught your kids this prayer? It, it, it went like, uh, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray thee, Lord, my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray thee, Lord, my soul to take. Uh, I don't know, is it, does that sound like a little creepy? As I say it, it sounds like a little bit of a creepy prayer. I mean, at what age do you introduce to your children the idea that they just might die in their sleep? You know, I mean, I don't know, three, four, 10, 20. Like, at what point do you say, you know, it's a possibility, so you need to be ready for that. But I was like in that stage of like, if I died, where would I go? So I couldn't sleep. So I got up out of bed and I went to the top of the stairs where you could kind of look down and around the corner was the living room and there was my mom sitting on the couch on this really cool 1970s couch. It was orange and brown and black. It had the wood armrests, like all wood, dark wood armrests. And, and the couch is made of pillows that you can pull off and make forts out of, which we did often. And, in, and so I went down and I... And I I told my mom, I'm so glad she didn't say go back to bed, but she said, David, what's, what's the matter? And, uh, and I told her that I was afraid. And she listened to me, and she, she shared with me the gospel and called me to trust in Jesus. 
it was really a beautiful moment where she, she talked to me about how Jesus, reminded me of what I'd heard so many times, that Jesus died on the cross for me, that he went to heaven to prepare a place for me. He, she shared with me from John chapter 14. You remember John 14 where Jesus says to the disciples, don't be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If that were not so, why would I tell you? That, you know, and I go prepare a place for you and I'll come back so that one day you can be with me where I am. Something like that. That's, she shared that with me. She shared that Jesus went to the cross for me. And she led me in a prayer to ask Jesus to forgive me my sins and to, to come into my life to give me the peace of God, to know that I'm a child of God and that I'll be with him in heaven one day. It was a beautiful moment. It was a moment in which I came to the assurance of salvation in Jesus Christ. So maybe that question that, that I had as a kid is your question today. Uh, maybe part of you wonders, how can I know if I'm going to heaven? Th- some questions, the answer really, really does matter. This is one of those, not all questions are created equal. Some have a, have a consequence that's really serious. This is, this is one of those. And so if that's your question today, then my response to you uh, today is to invite you to look to the answer in three places. To the word of God, to the work of Jesus, and to the witness of the Holy Spirit. That God has given you three places to look. To a word, to a work, and to a witness. And so I want to I wanna share that with you today. That you can have confidence that one day you'll be with God in heaven forever. Okay, so let's dive in. First of all, the first place we look is to the word of God. That's where we go first. The question of our eternal destination, yours and mine, is addressed by the word of God. It says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know, get that, that you may know that you have eternal life. Uh, You can know that you have eternal life in heaven. Did you catch that? You can know it. I mean, you can know it. The Apostle John says, I want you to know. I wrote these things so that you can know. Not so that you can be like, you know, which way is the wind blowing today? I'm not real sure, but you know, this is how I feel now. It has nothing to do with your feelings. You can know that you have eternal life. That's not a small thing to say. Uh, I think many people live, and you tell me what you see. I see many people who live their lives. uh, On the one hand, they say, I believe in God, but when it comes, so they're theists for sure. But then when you ask about the assurance of heaven, they're they're kind of agnostic. They're not not really sure whether you can really know if you're going to go to heaven. Um, that's, That's troubling to me. And my response to that is, what a horrible way to live your life. Unsure and uncertain. You do not have to live that way, even if many people do. Okay, church, you do not have to live that way even if many people do, even if most people do. Listen to the word of God. Look to it. Here's what it says in Romans 10. If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there's no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, that passage I just read is either true or or it's not true, but for sure what it is not is uncertain, right? Or or vague. I mean, it is so concrete, and it is so to the point. Let me use an illustration that um, Nikki Gumbel, who is the the pastor who teaches on the Alpha course, the one that I've been telling you, you gotta come to. It starts next month, in the month of February. We want you to come at the end of the month, come be a part of that, Thursday nights, it's a great opportunity. But Nicky Gumbel uses this illustration on the course. He, uh, he talks about how, he asks, how can I know that I am married to my wife? How can I know that? How can I know? So I'll ask it this way. How can I know that I am married to Michelle? How can I know that? What if I wake up one morning and I don't feel 
married. Am I married to her? What if one morning I wake up and I don't remember whether I'm married to her or not? What if like amnesia or something happens, right? And I wake up in the morning and I look next to me and I'm like, who is this person lying in my bed, right? Like, who, is this, is this my wife? I sure hope so, right? Like, who, who is this person, right? What if, how would I know? How would I know if this person lying next to me is indeed my wife? Well, for one thing, for one thing, there is a document. There is a, a word that, that says that I am indeed her husband. There's, there's a word that stipulates that, in fact, I've been married to her. There's a marriage certificate that says that she is my wife and I am her husband. Now, just, just a quick fun story about that document. Uh, it, was, uh, it was my dad that married us. And uh, 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 the night after the wedding, so the, the second night, uh, 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 we're, on our, we're on our honeymoon. We haven't yet really gotten far away, but we, we will be in a little bit. But um, uh, I, there's a, a knock at the door. This is, we're, we're honeymooners. Like, who in the world is knocking on the door on this particular night? Two days, at, the second day after we got married, less than 24 hours after we've been married, or just over 24 hours. I'm like, who is this? I'm like, ah, it's my brothers, and they're messing with me. Oh, man, sure enough. So I go out turn on the light and open the door, and it's not my brother's. It's my dad. And I'm, I look at, look at him a bit incredulous, like, hey, hey, dad. You know, like, hey, what's, what's going on? And he looks at me a bit, you know, apologetic, and he says, oh, hey, Dave. He says, are you, are you busy? And, and I look at him like, um, yeah, kind of, dad, kind of kind of busy, but, but, but what's up? He said, oh, I, yeah, sorry. Uh, I just, I forgot to get your signature on the marriage license. I just think, could you sign this? And Michelle, t- I'm like, yeah, okay, hold on a second, Dad. I'm like, I'm like, yeah. Okay, so, right, it was just great. Like, thanks, Dad, good, good memory for us uh, coming in on the second night of our, uh, after our wedding. Um, what's the point? One way that I know that I'm married, if I should forget or if my feelings fail me, my memory fails me, one way that I know that I've in fact married is there's a word. There is a written word which testifies to who I really am and who she really is. Likewise, likewise, in the same way, if you were to ask me how I know that I am a Christian bound for heaven, it's because not because of my feelings, which are fleeting, or my memory, which may fail me, but there is a word. There is a word, the word of God, which tells me who I am in Christ. It says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How can I know? How can I know if I'm going to heaven? I can look for the answer in the word of God. And secondly, I can look to the work of Jesus, the son, the work of Jesus. See, there is in time and space an event that took place. There was something that happened. Jesus did something in time and space that makes my hope of heaven more than wishful thinking. Uh, again, using the illustration, what if I woke up one morning and didn't recognize Michelle? Like, who is this woman over here? You know, I'm wondering who she is. Am I married to her? I could, I could point back to the fact that there was an event. There, there was a day in the past that guarantees my identity as her husband and her as my wife. You'd, you would come to me and you would say, Hey, hey, Dave, I mean, you look confused, but l- l- let me clear it up for you. Look, hey, look. And you would show me, and you would, you would remind me, and you would tell me about the events of June the 15th, 1996, my wedding day. Y- you could do that. You could, you could show me pictures. You could show me video of the wedding, and, and there it would be. Again, my identity as Michelle's husband is not based on how I feel. My identity as her husband is not even based on how good a husband I am. 
I can know that I'm married to her because someone said, I pronounce you husband and wife in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the same way, similarly, if you were to ask me how I know that I'm a Christian who's going to heaven one day, I could point to an event. My identity as a heaven-bound child of God is not based on my feelings or how good a Christian I am. Because there again, it's like, how am I, am, I, am I a Christian today? Yeah, I'm doing really good. Well, great. Well, what about tomorrow? I don't know. I'll tell you tomorrow. How uncertain is that? My identity as a Christian bound for heaven is not based on how good I'm doing as a Christian. It's based on something so much more solid than that. My identity is based on an event and a performance that are not my own and not your own either. Billy Graham, an evangelist who spent his life sharing the hope of Christ with people, said this, your salvation depends on what Christ has done for you, not on what you do for him. It isn't your hold of God that saves you. It's his hold of you. That is, that is radical. That is life-changing thinking right there. That my identity is, and security in Christ is not on my hold of him, but of his hold of me. My hope of heaven is based on the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yours too. Yours too. Paul says that Jesus defeated death and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. So let me encourage you today. Get this. In heaven, there will be no more crying because there will be no more pain. And there will be no more temptation because there will be no more sin. There will be no more suffering and no more separation from loved ones who know Jesus. In heaven, we will see Jesus face to face. We will be transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. We will be given new bodies that won't wear out. Thanks be to God. Heaven will be a place of intense joy and delight that goes on forever. Forever and ever. Amen. Amen. C.S. Lewis put it like this in one of his Narnia books. He says, the term is over. The holidays have begun. The dream is ended. This is the morning. All their life in this world had only been the cover and the title page. Now at last, they were beginning chapter one of the great story, which no one on earth has read, which goes on forever, in which every chapter is better than the one before. Oh man, right? Can you imagine living the great story that no one has ever read where every chapter, the next chapter is better than the one before? That is your future in heaven because of Jesus. Not because you're such a good Christian or not because you feel like you're a Christian today, but because of the work of Jesus Christ. How can I know if I'm going to heaven because of the word, because of a work, and because of a witness? The witness of the Holy Spirit. See, when you become a Christian, when you acknowledge your sin and receive what Jesus did for you at the cross, his work on your behalf, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God, the, the, the third member of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. When you, when you become a Christian, he comes to live in your life. And one of his jobs, one of his primary jobs, it's a full-time job with us, okay, is he's constantly reminding us of what's true and dispelling the lies that we are so easily deceived by. Because one of the things that God knows about us is it's so easy for us to be deceived. And so he gives us the Holy Spirit whose job is to constantly remind us of what is true. And he, in fact, he's called in John 16, the spirit of truth. Listen to this. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. Well, well, what does that mean? Is he going to like tell us the future? Like who's going to win the Super Bowl? Or 
what stocks are going to rise and which are going to fall and who's going to win in 2024. No, no, no. That's not what he's... His job is to... What is yet to come that he's going to talk about is referring to our future with God in heaven forever. He's going to testify to the truth of God's promises that we can, by faith in Jesus, live forever with God in heaven. The Holy Spirit is your witness. He lives inside of you, reminding of you what's true. So again, back to the illustration of marriage. How can I know, what if one day I wake up in the morning, I'm like, who is this person next to me? Who is this person? One way I can know, if I don't recognize Michelle and who she is, and that I'm actually married to her, one way I can know is for someone to say, um, hey, Dave, you look a little confused, but let me straighten you out. Um, she's absolutely your wife because uh, when you got married, I was there. Like, I was there. Like, I saw it. I heard it. I witnessed the whole thing, right? The power of a testimony. Or my kids. My kids could come to me and say, hey, Dad, again, you look, you look confused. Again, you know, uh, <laughs> you usually do. Uh, you look confused. We can straighten you out. See this woman over here? That's our mother, you know? And, and she's your wife, and she's been living in our family for our whole lives. So you might be confused, but we are not. And we can testify that this is your wife. See, The power of a testimony, of a witness, is incredible. And in Romans chapter 8, it says that if you are a child of God by faith in Jesus, the Holy Spirit is bearing witness in your soul, that the, the spirit is testifying to your spirit, to your soul, about what is true, about who you are and who he is and what God has in mind for you. He's working to create this deep personal conviction that no matter how worthy you may feel, you are in fact, by faith in Jesus, a child of God, and he loves you. Romans 8 says this, for those who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are God's our children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we uh, may also share in his glory. The Holy Spirit is right now testifying in your heart. If you're a believer in Jesus, testifying in your heart that you are his child, that God loves you, and that you will one day share in glory. But maybe, just maybe, you're dealing today with a question that I faced that night as a kid. How can I know if I'm going to heaven? My mom led me in a prayer in which I confessed my need for Jesus, asked him to forgive me my sins, to just come into my heart and bring me the peace and the assurance that I'm his child forever. And I slept great after that. I did, I slept great after that. Through that prayer, I was brought to the assurance of knowing who he was and who, who I am and what light lays in store for me one day in eternity, you see? It's a, it's a beautiful thing. And I want that for you. you know? Would you like to have that kind of assurance? You can have it. Remember, remember, say this with me. John, 1 John 5, 13, say this with me out loud. Say it. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Yeah, you can know. So I want to pray right now, and I'm going to invite you to, to pray, maybe right along with me. Maybe echo the prayer in your heart of the words that, that I pray. Because if you wonder what your eternity looks like, you don't have to wonder any longer. So let me, let me pray with you. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? Uh, Lord, we, we live in a world filled with so much uncertainty. So now give us the assurance that we need, each of us, that we are your children by faith in Jesus and heirs of an eternity with you in heaven, Lord. Now, if you'd like that assurance today, I'd like to pray a simple prayer, and you can echo this in your heart. Say these words. Lord Jesus, thank you that I, by faith in you, can face the future 
with confidence and certainty. You died for my sin and rose again. Thank you. I believe that. And trust what you did as the basis for my hope of one day living forever with you. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and life. Holy Spirit, testify with my spirit that I am indeed a child of God, loved by God with a never-ending love. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I, I, I want to say again, thank you for, for joining us today. And if you're joining us maybe online and uh, you don't know Jesus as your Savior, but, but maybe through the word today, God has met you, we'd love to chat with you and help you begin and to walk in a relationship with Jesus Christ. So be in touch with us. And uh, meanwhile, God blessings on, God's blessings on you. Hear these words of good news spoken over you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God's peace be with you.